Okay, here is our next formula. Uh, you should pause and take a minute to write this down. Okay, great. I'm glad you got this, that written down. Every time you work one of these problems, you need to write down all your knowns, what you're looking for, and you need to find your formulas you're going to use so that you can organize your work. Again, don't try to go straight from up here and randomly put numbers in down here. It'll mess it up. So also, I'm going to say this problem and the, pro the problem you're going to work that goes with it they're a little uh, sketchy on the problems. They're a little funny. These are written by Project Lead the Way. I didn't write them. We're just going to go with it and do these calculations. They've kind of oversimplified these a little bit, so you just have to bear with it. So it's saying that a student is going to watch the morning weather to decide what clothes to wear. And they're going to look at the temperature in the bedroom and the student's skin temperature. And we're going to determine how much energy they lose just by sitting in the cold room for 15 minutes. So first we need the surface area. Well, they've calculated that they're estimating the surface area of a student is 1.3. Please don't think of, ask how they found that. That's just an estimate. Okay, then E stands for the emissivity constant, and they've told us what it is for a student. This is E, 0 0.9. Again, this would be some kind of constant that they have to tell us in the problem or we'd have to have some place to look it up. Sigma, this is a sigma and it look it's sigma means is a constant and it's given on your formula chart. So we're just going to write down the number off of the formula chart. This is just a constant that they calculated that we need for our formula. I'm just copying this straight off the chart. This is the same for every single problem you're going to work. That's always going to be the sigma in this formula here. Big T means temperatures, temperature 1 and temperature 2. In this case, it's not going to matter which one we put first. I'm going to put the 65 as the first one because we're talking about the student losing heat So, to the bedroom, so I'm going to put this one first. And then delta T, little t, is time, and we said that it's 15 minutes. But we already figured out in some of the other problems that we need to convert times over to seconds. We don't do time in anything other than seconds. So multiply this times 60, and we get that this is 900 seconds. Okay, in this problem, they're, just, they're asking us to find the net energy transfer. That's P net. And we're also going to have to calculate Q as we go along. So we have this formula here, and an important thing to realize on this formula is this 4 goes with just the T. You have to raise the T to the fourth power before you subtract it. On your calculator, on your calculator to raise a number to the fourth power, if I wanted to raise 3 to the fourth power, I would use this symbol to the fourth power. Remember, that means 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. So that's how you do it. So what we're saying is in this formula, you need to raise the number to the fourth power first before you subtract. Okay, in order to use this formula, you'll notice that this uh, constant right here that we were given has Kelvin as the units of temperature. And Kelvin is a metric unit. So first we need to take our Fahrenheit and change it over to Celsius and this is the formula. And then you need to change the Celsius by adding 273 to get it to Kelvin. So I'm just going to tell you those so the video doesn't go forever. That makes this one 306.15 degrees Kelvin and this one 291.48 degrees Kelvin. Take a second, plug these into the formula, make sure that you can get to these Kelvin temperatures. You do have to do that on your practice problem that you're going to be doing yourself. I do want to show you how to plug in. So we're going to start with this formula right here, and I'm going to write it down here, and we're going to do this part first. Always take this part kind of out to the side and do this part first. I've got it set up that way on your practice one. T2 to the fourth minus T1 to the fourth. So we're going to plug these two numbers in here and do this part first. So we've got 3, oh, and I 
wrote those down backwards. These should be backwards. So we've got 291.48 degrees to the fourth minus 306.15 to the fourth. So we need to plug these in on our calculator and do this part first. So I'm going to show you how that looks on the calculator. So I've already typed it in. I type those two in here, and when I hit enter, I get this ginormous number. It would really be nice if this was given to us in scientific notation. What you may not have noticed is that this says degrees right here instead of saying anything else at the bottom. This right here says scientific engineering. So if I push the second and this button, it gives me an option. This is just regular decimals. This is scientific notation, and that's what we want to go to. You can also go to the engineering, but I'm just going to go to the scientific and show you what it looks like. Here's my scientific notation. This is a much easier number to deal with. So I'm going to write this one down as my answer here. 1.0 times 10 to the ninth power. This is a very big number. This is like 15 million in this number right here. But we need it because this one has the negative 8. So that's going to balance that number out there when we plug it in. So now I'm going to plug these into my formula. I'm going to use this PNET formula with this that I just got. So PNET, I'm going to copy it down again. So I copied down this formula. Sigma comes from up there. A came from up there. Uh, e comes from up there. And the delta, this whole thing, we just calculated over here on the side, so I'm going to write it out. Now we got this number when we calculated this, and what was the units on it? Well, this was degrees Kelvin. And we raised it to the fourth power, and this was degrees Kelvin, and we raised it to the fourth power. So this is degrees K to the fourth power. So now, I just took this number and put it right there. Multiply this stuff on your calculator. And we get... Now let's check the units on here. What I have is I have degrees Kelvin here to the fourth, and degrees Kelvin to the fourth here. Meters squared, meters squared. This had no units on it, and this leaves just watts. And power transfer, power, is in watts. Now we said we needed to use power, and we also want to find Q, because it actually asks us to determine the net energy transfer. So now we need to do our Q equals power times delta time. This is time. So I know P is this number. Delta T is 900 seconds, which gives us watts over seconds. And what is watts over seconds? That is joules. There's our final answer.